cold, it's dark. Rick and I are going to start a new show called Cold Dark. Cold Dark. Where we get our tops Cold off. Cold Dark. And we, uh, we st- you know, we send everyone to winter. We run along beaches in Cornwall. <laughs> but in winter. <laughs> I'm away to trend with to find me a tube screamer. Very good. Very we're, good. We're on our way to Nam. I'm struggling with technology. I've become, <laughs> uh, hey, Mickey Tool Fault. Uh, Mickey Tool Fault. Um, and uh, yeah, we're on our way. After saying we weren't going, we are going. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm sort of pointing this at Dan or maybe I'm not. Anyway, uh, for anyone interested, this is the M4 motorway in England. And as be- has become a tradition of going to Nam, there's been some snow. Yeah. It happens a lot, actually. Yeah. Uh, Anyone in Canada or Sweden will be laughing their ass off at this point <laughs> because basically, like about any more light feather, a light feather dusting of snow. Yes, any more than one centimetre ruins things for the UK. So uh, anyway, next stop Heathrow. Next stop Heathrow. So we're just documenting Nick's awesome headphone situation. So the story is I had a pair of Bose noise cancelling headphones that were really, really expensive and they went wrong. I contacted Bose and said, can I, can you repair them? And they said, no, uh, they're unrepairable, even though they were like 260 quid. Uh, but we, you can have 20% off a new pair. And I thought, do you know what? I'm never buying a Bose thing ever again as long as I live because my um, Sennheiser headphones are all repairable. Every part is repairable. Um, the ones I use for monitoring in the office, their dynamics, all repairable. So, you know, not, not cool with that, actually. So anyway, I'm using my uh, Fender in-ear jobs. Right. Number one, right? Okay. So that's headphone number one. Headphone number one. Right. And then a splitter. And that goes into a, right, into a splitter. Splitter. To enable me to engage my <laughs> sure whatever they are. So you actually wear two pairs of headphones. Yeah, so what I get is lovely bass resonance on the outside with these and some extra cancelling. And these are really nice in the upper, mids and high frequencies. Right. So you've got a D, DYI, <laughs> DIY, DIY, DIY noise cancelling. Neurophone headphones. Check that out. Dude, that's awesome. Badly organised, Dan. It's an administrative, a bureaucratic nightmare. <laughs> simple systems, just some simple software, some simple systems would solve all of this. But anyway, we've arrived. The uh, Lincoln Town Car didn't turn up. No. So we got the super shuttle <laughs> Cheers everyone. Martinis, this is what we do now. Martinis. They do have a bottle of wine on here from France. It is a white wine. <laughs> uh, it is Petrus Pomerol from Bordeaux in France from 1999. It's 640 calories and uh, $2,269. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be going with a Robert Mondavi Pinot Noir down. <laughs> It begins, Mick. It begins. We're actually in Glasgow. <laughs> it's Hotel Caledonia. Uh. <laughs> uh, right, breakfast. Joe's, may I suggest Joe's Crab Shack? <laughs> 7 30 a.m., people. We've been to the gym, but not yet had breakfast, so it's an auspicious first day. Beautiful day. Yeah. Amazing. Chicken and waffles. Waffles and chicken. This is Roscoe's. Um. <laughs> so where it says House of Chicken and Waffles, it's not a sign, it's the actual menu. Americans won't be surprised that you can eat chicken and waffles in the same meal. That's awesome. Most Europeans would find it completely odd, but yeah, waffles chicken and then like syrup and stuff and cream and like it's like pudding main all in one it's awesome check that out 
until you actually come here, it's really hard to describe just how big it is. <laughs> So one of the advantages about getting here nice and early is that uh, you can see stuff can before, see stuff it's, before open. it's open. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like Peterson have come up with a new, um, the new strobe stuff, a new strobe tuner. I think I just found my new tuner, Dan. So there oh, we so go. Oh, oh, hang on. Whoa. Now he's worked it out. Now he's worked it out. Yeah, I have. Um... <laughs> Hello, Sue. Sorry, I know you're not really open. Yet. That's no, that's okay. Problem. Everyone, this is Sue. Hi. See, this is everyone. <laughs> hey, check this out. This is really interesting. Peterson make probably the best tuners in the world. Strobo Stomp HD, and the reason you can see different colours down the wall is because you can load in different presets for different suite and tunings. So if you use the same tuner for your acoustic or your electric, you can call up um, a different tuner preset, so you might have different offsets for suite and tunings, which is really quite cool. Um, and Peterson are well known for their uh, accuracy of their stroke tuners. Um, what else? Seconds. It's got a buffered out or a true bypass. Nice. And um, it's a decent size and it's 129 US dollars, so it's a sensible wow. price. So I think you'll be seeing one of those on the uh, that pedal show yeah. uh, board That's very soon. Brilliant. Nick out. Nice. Okay, it's not a guitar pedal, but if you want the best guitar case in the world, in my opinion, Count cases, they are crazy expensive and they come in these sparkle finishes. Oh, pedal box. Pedal board box. Did you say pedal board? Oh, oh come on. Pedal board box. This year. Yeah. Any color, any custom. Makes it thicker, smaller. You guys bring one in right now, fully loaded with pedals too. This one's empty right now. But you know what? It makes a great toolbox too. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. They look amazing. Um, yeah, this thing, man. That's just awesome. He's 150 watts, um, kind of based off the old double steel string singer, which was Stevie Ray, one of Stevie Ray's amps. So just loud, 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 clean, clean, clean. Unbelievable. He's here with Thorpey. Uh, Thorpey has just released the Deep Organ. It's a chorus pedal, therefore I am really excited. It's got a proper preamp circuit in it. So it can get a little bit crunchy if you wanted to. You can boost it. Treble control as well, which I absolutely love. Um, really, really looking forward to getting this one on the show. This guy. Hiya, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, welcome to NAMM. We're with That Pedal Show, and I'm James Brown. <laughs> I'm gonna show you my new pedal, the Swirlpool Junior, which you have right here. The Swirlpool Junior is a synchronized tremolo and vibe and it has the ability to, to slide the waveforms of the two apart or together so you can make the uh, pitch and the, and the volume go up and down together or opposite or whatever you want. It also has two speeds built into the small pedal. You just lock it on, lock it on like this, and then when you hit that, it accesses the second speed. Any two of his uh, small size pedals in 
one box in any colour you want. And you can choose the order of them as well. Very good. And we're top! <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Yuki Hayashi of Prisa Town. Uh, welcome to Pedal Show. Awesome. So, yeah, Yuki from Free the Tone, he has got this amazing, amazing new delay pedal. Uh, it's called the Future Factory. So, we'll be getting this on the show as soon as Yuki can send one. Sras Vistia, Japoni Mayos, Japoni Mayos, Safsi M. Chuchu Sparuski. I'm speaking Russian. Yes, yes, I'm speaking good. Really? It's doing really great. Apparently, yeah. that dance Russian is good. Yeah, absolutely. We're here at Shipline. We've got an updated Astronaut. It's um, the version 3, which, uh, according to Oleg, has uh, more knobs and more LEDs. makes me all a bit wobbly in the knees. I can't wait to play this. That's for you, Simon. 
Uh, Tacalis Audio Works from Greece. New overdrive pedal that blends all the good bits of a Timmy, uh, a blue, a blue breaker, and a king of tone. So it's inspired by those three pedals. Multiple modes that you can mix uh, for different levels of gain. Um, and really brilliantly, 18 volts or 9 volts, which is really killer. Dan's just going to wang it for you. with Ibanez for this Tube Screamer, which kind of blends some of the cool bits of the classic 808 Tube Screamer uh, and the Vemiran Janray, uh, which is very exciting, not least because I've got Michael Landau Strat here, a two on classic reverb signature. Something aisles of Nam, we got one and a half. One, and a, one and a half. So done. we need to pick it up tomorrow. Yep. Dan, what was the best thing you've seen today? Chase Press Audio preamp Mark II with the automatic sliding faders. That thing has blown my mind. Yeah. But I will say the, the new stuff that's coming out is incredible, passion driven, yeah. inspired, yeah, yeah, creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah on, this, on, on which tack? The free to tone delay. Awesome. Uh, I think the Vemuran Tube Screamer it maybe isn't massively creative, but by golly, it sounded good. It sounded and, awesome. And the Two Rock uh, Sterling Silver Signature, Sterling Silver, yeah. the 150 watt crazy amp that nobody needs but everybody wants. Yep, the so, Carlos um, OD as well. The six, yeah. Uh, so clever. Good day. So, great day. Uh, fantastic. Thank you guys so much for following us, and we'll see you for day two at NAM tomorrow. Okay, day two. Off. <laughs> There's some things only an 18 inch sub, 18 inch subwoofer can do. Right. Make yeah. you feel ill. Hear that? Yeah, yeah. Yards. Last cages and told to play quietly. <laughs> Please have your IDs ready up front, okay? They're gonna ask you guys. Oh, oh, no, oh no, we've like, got the uh, battle of the. Um, yeah, but he's got like a fancy pants one that doesn't. I've just gone for the in house GoPro stabilization. It's on. It's on. It's on. It's on. Hey, it's on. 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 Brilliant. We've walked past the drum section by mistake. I didn't think you guys were coming. Wow. There was a whole thing two weeks ago, man. We weren't going to come and then we did. Yeah, rock on. Welcome back.
back, guys. Welcome back. Yeah. Wow.
at the Fender booth at NAMM. Six new pedals. Uh, MG Tube Distortion, which I'm particularly excited about trying. Uh, Downtown Express, which is the bass preamp thing. Bass multi, yeah. Awesome. Uh, new phaser, new chorus, new verb, and uh, the pinwheel, which is a rotary uh, speaker. Rotary speaker thing. Uh, can't wait to get them in. From what we've heard, they sound fantastic. So again, stand for Fender. Be getting his hands dirty. Brilliant. Awesome. Down out. Um, no. I would just like to apologise for panning the wrong direction because Dan's down goes up where mine goes down. All right. So I'm just going to say that. Anyway, uh, Neil, send us these and we'll get them on the show. Uh, new Fender Acoustasonic. Uh, something or other from Fender. They've done many guitars like this over the years that blend acoustic and electric. So you get a bunch of different sounds, right? Acoustic guitar sounds. Or, back here, an electric guitar sound. built-in distortion if you want it, overdrive, all within the guitar. And that is all through a powered PA cabinet, so it would be interesting to plug it into some other stuff and uh, see what we think. I can see that being quite useful. <laughs> Chris Stapleton, Princeton, which is quite exciting. Dan and I have got into Princeton's recently, so we're looking forward to hearing that. Come here because obviously there's been a big change at Gibson over this last year. They've got a new uh, president, a guy called JC, who's replaced Henry Juskovitz. And it's quite exciting because you know Gibson's been up for a lot of criticism over the last year, over the last many years, and the mood here is super, super, super positive. So we're checking out the new line of USA guitars and a bunch of other stuff. This is a SG reissue with sideways vibrola. Love that. Uh, NSG will become part of the That Pedal Show empire this year, for sure. So yeah, nice to see Gibson feeling so positive. Yeah. I so want a gold type. Tyler. Tyler, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you.
better could it get than that, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, somewhat, somewhat inspired by the prescription electronics one that Doyle Bramall uses. Haha, ha, big smiley face from Mick. <laughs> Chad, thanks. Thank you so much. Alright, no worries. Can I, I, can, I can't believe you guys are here. <laughs> this is the highlight of my name right here. <laughs> okay. How sensible is this? Check this out. Volume pedal with numbers on it and then a tuner. We've seen this concept before, but with these guys making it, it's probably going to be extremely successful and very, very available. So uh, I like it. Yeah. Okay, it's been the end of day two. It is now quarter to three in the morning. We sat on the wrong side then. This Wait, is gonna be terrible. Hang on, hang on the bed. All right. Oh, there we go. It's been a big day. We just saw Andy Timmons play, which has made us reevaluate our lives. With Mark Matiri and uh, who else? Andy Wood. Andy Wood. And Paul, Paul Gilbert. Gilbert. <laughs> How could you forget Paul Gilbert? Uh, it was astonishing, absolutely astonishing. Blimey. Not, not, no shortage of guitar playing talent in that room. No, amazing. Uh, everyone that's come up to us today to tell us how much TPS has meant to us is—I mean, it's been incredible, and we're genuinely touched by the whole experience. Yeah, it's been a big deal. Bonkers, bonkers, totally bonkers, incredibly, totally bonkers. So, last day tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned, and we will see you then. Cheers, guys. More wine tomorrow. More wine tomorrow. Ready? Famous or not, name as many guitar players as you can in 10 seconds. Three, two, one, begin. Steve Rabel, Jimmy Hendrix, Eric Johnson, uh, David Gilmore, Eric Clapton, Paul Gilbert, Andy Timmons, uh, Django Reinhardt, uh, Charlie Christian, Les Paul. Dude, he's nailing That's pretty good. That might Amazing. Be the most so far. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
Should we do Stonehenge? <laughs> it's those guys. Wait, 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 you, wait. I'll actually get a pedal show video. He's checking for damage. Sing. It's all internal, I think. Oh, okay, right, right, okay. Okay, this is exciting here with Matt from Boss. You know that we went to Japan last uh, year. We saw a prototype of this, which is the Tube Amp Expander. It's got 16 different reactive loads. It's got 100 watt solid state power amp. It's got inbuilt effects, compressors, and all stuff like that. Um, so basically, it's an attenuator, and it can do IRs, and you can load your own IRs. So it's a really serious bit of gear. We're going to get one pretty soon to have a listen to it. We heard the um, reactive load bit in Japan. And we're extremely impressed. So uh, yeah, an auspicious beginning. And whimsical, even. There you go. Uh, I don't even know why it's whimsical, but it is. Okay. Uh, how harsh it was. Guys, this is Tom. Tom is the legend that produced our tracks. That yeah, we did. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, meet the legend. Hello, howdy. Thanks, guys. It was a total pleasure. It was a total <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> pedal which has got a bunch of choruses, flanger and a vibrato in it which is really cool. We were saying that modulation is a theme here at NAMM this year um, and these guys make awesome pedals so we're looking forward to hearing that. Secondly there's a prototype of uh, an overdrive pedal that Matt Schofield is using. He has one overdrive for his neck pickup and one for the bridge pickup. He's been playing that for the last year or so um, and he's going to be playing it tonight when we see him at the Two Rock party these boys as well. So uh, yeah, Mad Professor, check them out. Okay, here at Crazy Tube Circuits, they have the new Sidekick, which is this unit here. It's we have our modulation, we have our delay, we have our reverb, all in one package. We also have a dedicated headphone output and the DI output with the ground lift and the uh, headphone output and the DI output will come with a cabinet simulator in the hotel in here. But it really does sound spectacular. We absolutely love this. We love this. And we've got one of these coming very soon. Yep. Awesome. Okay, here at Laney with Simon, who's just told us all about new stuff in Nam from Laney and Black Country Customs. Dan just showed you the LA100 Supermod, correct? Uh, which is a 100 watt version of this LA30BL that we really love. Kind of modded with a master volume. A master volume. Master volume few. We can all breathe out. Um, and three pedals. Are you building these in the UK? Yep, building in the UK. Uh, Steel Park Boost. Secret Path, re Reverb and Shimmer, and Monolith Distortion, and I know that because I'm reading it. And don't look now, but there's Pete Paul. There's a handsome What's man. up? Hey, How are you guys doing? How you doing?
Steve to come out. What's yeah. going on, Steve? How long do we have to wait? Uh, if it's not out by the end of the year, my wife's going to kill me, so. <laughs> yeah, but look how good it is. We learned uh, so much. Yeah. <laughs> Our thing, too, is like, I'm driving to work, a lot of times I'll just listen to your guys' Q&As. Oh, cool. Instead of, nice. instead of like, listening to me in the morning, like, I just got picked up. Yeah, I see it. What's up, boys? How you doing? Okay, we know this guy, Josh Scott from JHS Pedals. Josh has two new products for now. Yeah. One is... This is based on the 1984 Boss FA1 Pocket Series that had the belt clip. It is a fat boost. And I added a mid control, no EQ control, line level out. It's a base acoustic creep, but it's great before your drives and your amps. And this is a compressor, the whitey tidy. Because you, because you need to hold things in place <laughs> and keep your tone together. I was just banging on this using uh, a Telecaster, and I was Jack White. That's what was happening now. Oh, yeah. You are most welcome. As always, a whole bunch of stuff from Dunlop, MXR and Way Huge. That particularly caught my eye. It's called the Super Lead and apparently it's got a really touch sensitive um, aspect to it so that when you drop the volume on the guitar you lose a load of distortion really quickly so a bit like a really nice fuzz pedal and I think that will work so nice in a distortion I'm really looking forward to trying that I think that's uh, there's a seems like a cool concept to me so yeah yeah just a very quick one from Dunlop and MXR uh, and way huge Nick out Here at Strymon with Pete, the designer, creator, father of this incredible, uh, it's basically a drum uh, delay, but it does tape, but it does so much more than we could possibly get into in one minute. Um, Mick and I have just had a, a demonstration and our minds are blown. We've got sound on sound, you've got the spacing between the heads, uh, three different speeds, um, tap tempo, it has presets, uh, it really is exceptional. Um, it's physically smaller than we thought it was going to be, yeah. and it does ten times more than we thought. Amazing. So we're going to get this on the show as soon as humanly possible. Thank you so much for taking it through. Mine's blown. When we did the video, we were talking about to just cut that.
that is NAM 2019 uh, done for us. It's been fantastic actually. This is the best NAM I've been to in ages. So it's the end of them for us. Um, it's been amazing. It's been mind blowing, and it was finished off with a mind blowing night last night where all kinds of crazy people were, and we saw some amazing people play the guitar. And it's been a really, really great trip. It has. Both of our voices are gone, chapped lips, air conditioning has <laughs> killed us. Uh, and today we're doing something really special. We are. Before we get to that, what are some of the highlights for you for the trip? Um, I think choosing not to make loads of video right. has been the main highlight because we've been able to stop and talk to people. Yeah. For those of you who remember last year, we did the Not the Nam O'Clock News. <laughs> and I mean, it was a load of fun, but they were, we were doing 18 hour days, um, you know, just crazy amounts of running around. And then we'd film at Nam, we'd have to go back to the hotel and film at the hotel. We'd have to edit. And then Mick at two o'clock in the morning would be out stealing Wi-Fi from some <laughs> lobby in a hotel trying to upload the videos. And we this, did that. this is us moaning about going to Nam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> but so this year, I think the just doing the Instagram thing has been it's been fantastic because yeah, yeah. it's given us time to talk to people. It's like freedom, man. Yeah, well, it's been great. And we've you know everyone that's followed us on Instagram, that's been really cool. But then, obviously, this, everyone's going to see this on YouTube. and so, Yeah, what have we done? Like, 300 and something thousand? 300 thousand views on, on Instagram has been crazy. Uh, yeah, so... But, yeah, the highlight for me has been talking to people. Yeah. And just, you know, if we sit in a little room, you, you, me and Simon, and do these videos. And it, just getting feedback from people who really love the show. It's been amazing. That's been astonishing. So, um alongside all you lovely people who watch uh, that pedal show, among you lovely people who watch that pedal show, are some of our heroes. <laughs> and they came up to us to tell us that they watched that pedal show, which is crazy. Is I don't insane. want to think about that too much. But hey, not bad. No, unreal. Okay, so it's been great. Oh, I, I will say, as far as product is concerned, I've been more impressed with the product that I've seen this year than I have in any other year. Yeah. Honestly, the, the people, they're killing it at the moment. They're just... One of the things we kept saying, is, normally when you see somebody you know, the first question they ask you, what, you know, what have you seen that's great? And boy, oh boy. very often the kind of responses that we would give is, well, it used to be that you'd get gear that everybody used, normal gear, and then you'd get out there gear. And the mm. out there gear was for the out there people, and the normal gear was for the normal people, mm. and only the out there people played weird stuff. But there's a real coming together of some of that stuff, mm. particularly in really well-designed user interfaces, just really well thought through, um, switching and button presses and stuff. A great example of that is the new Strymon Volant. Oh. Uh, Volante. Uh, boy, oh boy. That thing. I just can't wait to spend a couple no. of days with that. That just looks sensational. Um, and then, you know, from Keeley's new synth, and we saw quite a lot of synthy, fuzzy things, mm -hmm. which are really cool. Yep. Loads of... Um, really interesting takes on modulation and that sort of coming together of what used to be out there yeah. and regular stuff. Yeah. 
And that's exciting because what that means is creativity and what that means is people play the guitar more. Happy yeah. days. Chase Basordio pushing the boat out with their um, preamp Mark, Mark II. Yeah. Motorized fading sliders and faders and uh, just unreal. Bonkers. Bonkers stuff. One thing we didn't get to see, which uh, annoyed me because I only just remembered that we didn't get to see it, is the new Marshall 21 yeah. Well, we didn't, amps. Yeah, the, there was so much that we didn't see. Yeah. But we didn't put too much pressure on ourselves. We did what we could. Um, you know, like I said, the priority this time really was to get some great stuff shot, but not to be so crazy with the amount of pressure and to, you know. Yeah, to actually enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Imagine but we that. will we will see that we will get some of the new Marshall stuff, you know. The, we didn't didn't make it to Petty John, unfortunately no, either. No. Um, but there's a bunch or, or uh, B Tronics. Yeah. A bunch of guys we didn't see, Korea. unfortunately. Um, we saw Nick. We saw, we saw Nick. He we gave us a t shirt, but we didn't actually do anything on the stand. No. Oops. No. <laughs> um, so fast forward to today. We've just driven out to Burbank. Last year we filmed uh, some stuff at NAM at Jam Pedals. Oh, we didn't do those. Oh, no. You forgot to go and see Yannis. So, <laughs> and they had some amazing art done on a few of the pedals. And the art was done by uh, a gentleman called John Ackenbach. And John is one of the artists for The Simpsons. So, we filmed these pedals and saying how amazing they looked. And John got in touch. He said, hey guys, I'm a fan of the show. I'm like, Wow, that's amazing. He said, would you like a tour of the Simpsons facility and all that stuff? So we are, we've driven out to Burbank, about to meet John and go and have a tour and have a look at how the Simpsons are done. It's crazy, it's totally crazy. Unreal. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. let's, let's do that. Yeah, all right, so that was, uh, yeah, that was NAM 2019. Yeah. Killer. Cheers, guys. Bye. <laughs>